Uh, thank you. Chair now recognizes Mr. Donalds from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, witnesses. I always find it interesting when we go over this topic. Um, uh, one thing, let's be clear, the EPA has no authority for this rule. Once again, we have another agency somewhere in this administration coloring in the outsides of whatever their congressional purview is. And this administration is more than comfortable doing it because they know they cannot come to the Congress to get the votes for what they want to do. That's why EPA is doing this. I know this is a different committee I sit on, but that's why the SEC is doing what the SEC does, and we can go all through the alphabet soup agencies. Um, Mr. Bradbury, a couple of things. I want to just get to a couple of key areas here. Um, oh, well, lost my place. Here we go. True or false, President Biden says he wants 50% of new cars to be electric by 2030. True, but I guess now it's 60%. Okay. True or false, in order to meet Tesla's EV needs, and this is only Tesla, by the way, um, by 2030, global lithium supply must be increased by, uh, by X times. Oh, it definitely has to increase somehow. We don't know from where. It has to increase greatly. Yes. Okay. True or false, a typical electric car requires six times the mineral inputs of a, conven of a conventional car. Yes. True or false, the nuclear energy is the most viable option for a steady stream of reliable, affordable, carbon-free electricity to power EV charging stations 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I'm sorry, what? Nuclear power. Yes. That's, okay. my, that's my understanding. Okay. Not an expert, but. That's fine. Last question. If 50% if 50 of the cars were electric vehicles today, is there enough power on the electric grid to charge them all? Absolutely not, no. I want to circle back to one thing, and Ms. Baker Brand said I was listening to your testimony. Uh, we kind of established the, the, the fact pattern that in order to accomplish what I believe you do support, uh, we'd have to massively expand lithium mining, um, not to mention other mining capacities. Currently in the world today, who dominates lithium mining? So lithium processing is dominated by China. Um, it's mined in several other places as well. Do you know some of the countries where it's mined? Um, in South America as well. South America, any other places? Um, Are they mining in Africa? Lithium? I'm not, I don't think it's a major lithium producer, no. Okay. Are they mining cobalt in Africa? Yes. Is cobalt necessary for an electric vehicle? Um, it is in the dominant chemistry at the moment, yes. Okay. Let me answer this question. You say in your testimony that, the, essentially referring to the current internal combustion engine, that in addition to carbon dioxide, heavy-duty vehicles emit or contribute to ozone, particular matter, nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides, carbon monoxide, and other air toxins that are especially harmful to children developing, to children's developing bodies. Um, are you aware that the Chinese use child slave labor in some of their mines to mine critical minerals? Yes, and in Africa as well. That's why we need to onshore and friendshore the supply chain. We should clean it up and we should be very involved and be a leader in this space. Do you think that the United States should even be dealing with electric vehicles right now considering all critical minerals come from mines that employ child slave labor? So, like I said, it's important for us to move in the right direction and the IRA incentives are helping us do that, both for domestic content as well as critical minerals coming from safer places. I got a question for you. Since the EPA is so enthralled with what's coming out of the tailpipe of an average American, <laughs> is the same EPA going to be just moving through the permitting for new lithium mines and other mines in the United States? Or are they going to also want to put that off on other countries? So lithium mining is on the table in the United States. And on the table? Define. Yes. Explain that. That there are permitting that there are permits that are currently pending. So the EPA that wants to ban gas stoves and is concerned about what's coming out of a tailpipe now wants to allow lithium mining in the United States? Just they're just gonna say, oh yeah, cool, let's do it. So mining definitely needs to be done in a safer way. The US and North America can do it safer than other places. This is true for all mining for all um, you know, consumer products and everything, including now, traditional vehicles. I'm glad you said that because I actually agree with that point. The United States can actually mine for all these critical minerals, whether right here at home, which means jobs for Americans, but also in friendly, uh, friendly places around the globe. But we can actually do that better and we do it cleaner than the Chinese do. Uh, my concern is that the EPA's radical push 
towards electric vehicles, what that's really going to do, it's going to price out the very poor. Poor people don't have money to buy an electric vehicle. I know because I grew up poor. We didn't even have a car. So then if I just have a car and you tell me that I have to spend $20,000 more to buy an electric vehicle, I just find that to be crazy. Right. Because that, that, that disrespects my pocketbook. It disrespects the pocketbook of every American on the lower side of our economic spectrum. Wouldn't you agree with that? So EVs are dropping in price, and the, and the, new, the standards from EPA are for new vehicles. Mr. Chairman, I know I'm out of time. Quick question for my indulgence. What's cheaper, a internal combustion used car or an electric used car? It depends on the vehicle class and type. Come on. I yield back. Thank you. Chair now recognizes Ms. Brown from Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses. Um, I applaud the Environmental Protection Agency for putting 